Here to look ahead to today's vote and the high stakes politics surrounding it, House Democratic Caucus Chairman John Larson of Connecticut and the House Republican Conference Chairman Mike Pence of Indiana. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining me. I would be with thank you, Kenny. Kenny. State of play. Where are you? 216, have you got them locked in? This is a historic day, and we are happy warriors. We are so proud of the Democratic Caucus that we will be a part of history joining Franklin Delano Roosevelt's uh, passage of Social Security, Lyndon Johnson's uh, passage of Medicare, and now Barack Obama's passage of health care reform. So you've got the 216. We've got the votes. And the reason for that, Candy, I think it started earlier this week with uh, Natoma Canfield becoming the poster child for, or lady, for health care reform. And... Uh, that struck such a chord within our caucus. And Dennis Moore standing up to give a speech in the caucus was blackberried by a woman who works for him in Kansas. She said, thank you for voting for this. I know I'm losing my job at the end of this year, and unfortunately, I've just been diagnosed with cancer. Without this bill, I'm lost. Dennis ended by saying, and she's 24. You could have heard a pin drop. It's, this is about whose side you're on. In Clearly, you know, this historic moment in the people's chamber, we're on the side of the American people and those that have been denied access to health care, and those who have pre-existing conditions who have been denied, and those who have had their policies rescinded. Congressman Pence, I think that puts you on the side not of the people, if, I, if we take his calculation. <laughs> what is left for Republicans to do? Uh, Congressman Larson says they have the 216. Uh, so it's all over but the shouting? You guys vote no and move on? Well, I don't know if they have the votes. The House Republicans are going to use every means at our disposal. What uh, is that? To, uh, just... Well, stay tuned, Candy. Uh, it's going to be an interesting day. I mean, can um, you disrupt the vote? Or gonna, what, I mean, what's available? We're going to use every means at our disposal uh, to oppose this government takeover of health care. Uh, because, quite frankly, uh, you know, as, as uh, uh, you know, thousands gathered at rallies all across this country and here in the nation's capital ye yesterday. You know, the American people are sick and tired of runaway federal spending by both parties, of borrowing and bailouts and takeovers. Uh, and, and I believe this is going to be a historic weekend. It is. But I think it's going to be his different in the way that John thinks it's going to be. I think this is going to be a historic weekend because I think this weekend is going to be the beginning of the end of business as usual in Washington, D.C. I think the American people uh, see an administration and see a Congress that are in a headlong rush to confront the very real challenges that we have in health care with more government instead of more freedom. They, they know the, the Republicans have been offering solutions from the beginning. Let people purchase health insurance across state lines, pass malpractice reform, cover pre-existing conditions. All of that can be done without a massive trillion dollar expansion of the federal government and burdening future generations with more deficits but and more But the reality debt. of this day is that you don't have the votes to stop it. You may have the means right. to delay it. Right. You know, the Republicans, it shouldn't be a news flash to anybody. Republicans don't have the votes to stop anything in the House of Representatives. We're in a decisive so you're minority. Politically. But what's remarkable about this one year debate has proven my point that a minority in Congress plus the American people equals a majority. Republican, the reason that they weren't able to do this last year, remember all the deadlines? We had deadlines in the summer, we had deadlines in the fall, we had deadlines at the end of the year. The American people don't want this government takeover of health care. And uh, I, I do believe, I don't know if they have the votes today, but I guarantee you the American people know they have the votes in November. The American people who are already on Medicare, all of our veterans who already receive uh, TRICARE, understand the importance and the value of having insurance coverage. For 47 million Americans who have none, 31 million will now be able to have access to insurance, lowering costs, lowering costs for small businesses, lowering the national debt. Uh, first, $138 billion and then $1.2 trillion. We can't afford not to do this. I and want then to talk taking to you. care of those, taking care I want of those to talk people. To about the debt. Hang on one CBO, second, because I've got to take a quick break. We'll, we'll come back because I do want to talk about the cost because there are some figures out there floating. I'll do that. We will be back with Congressman Larson and Pence right after this. We are back with Democratic Congressman John Larson of Connecticut and Republican Congressman Mike Pence of Indiana. We were talking about the cost of this. The CBO has said over 10 years. 
this health care bill will reduce the deficit by $143 billion. However, that doesn't include what might come and what's been promised with more than a wink and a nod to doctors, which is right. to up their Medicare payments, their reimbursements, which would cost $208 billion, which then means it actually would be, would add to the deficit. Is that, is my math correct there? Well, if that were to be true, yeah, but here's the thing, there's no question about the fact that we need to take care of the docs and we need to emphasize primary care. But also what never gets discussed, Candy, is something that Reuters came out with earlier this year. $700 billion annually in inefficiencies in the system, lack of interoperability in hospitals, last, lack of a continuum of care, and fraud and abuse. $700 billion. I think that we're going to, that's $7 trillion over a 10-year period. I think that we're more than going to be able to wring out the cost in there. I think that's why the president brought people down to Washington, uh, in, to the White House. That's why he brought the six in, to try to wring out those costs as we go forward. You know, we spend 20% of gross domestic product. The closest country to us is Switzerland. I can't believe that we can't get that money out of there. Can't we get that money out? Yeah, yeah we, we do such a great job here in Washington wringing out the cost. Uh, well, that's in the private $1. sector. $1.6 trillion dollar deficit this year. You know, only in Washington, D.C. could you say with a straight face that you're going to spend a trillion dollars and save taxpayers' money. Look, look you, you point out the doc fix. This is a total fraud that Democrats are leaving out $200 billion dollars in spending that the Speaker of the House committed again this week to spend, which makes this, even using this CBO's numbers, it makes this a bill that adds to the deficit in the short term and in the long term. But look, even beyond that, Candy, the, the American people know, but you expand the federal government's role in health care without giving the American people more health care choices by purchasing across state lines, without passing any medical malpractice reform at all. Roughly a third of health care costs in this country, I hear, are actually defensive medicine driven by junk lawsuits. The American people know That's this is going to cost more and, and, and add more to the deficit, add more to the debt, cost higher taxes, even than the rosiest scenarios that are presented. CBO is the Bible. It, it is, CBO, but it's not so it's always a, accurate, as you true. know. And, oh, we have arguments with them all told the time, but that's, all that, we can, that's right, sure. all that we can vote on. Uh, absolutely, uh, but it still is one of those things that we might not find out except for 10 years from now. And the president, and the president has now. put in numerous reforms that are going to take, a, uh, take effect, including the inability to rescind your in insurance policy, pre-existing conditions, for women across this country, Candy, I mean, their birth is a pre-existing condition. Domestic violence is a pre-existing condition. A C-section yeah. is a pre-existing condition. And my, my, my wife had, to, but John, John, my wife on, had, my wife had a pre-existing condition. I lost my job about 15 years ago. My wife had a pre-existing condition. She was pregnant with our daughter, Audrey. We went to the state guarantee fund a fund that would be replenished if we passed medical malpractice reform. We could use the savings to strengthen those funds to cover people like my wife was covered. You don't need a government takeover of health care. You don't need to mandate that every American purchase health insurance whether they want it or need it or not. And you don't need to put us on a pathway towards socialized Where's medicine. The takeover by and the that's government? what this crowd is doing today. Where's Let me the ask you something. Just turn you runs Medicare currently. TRICARE is run by the government. Where is the takeover of government? Well, I'll break it down, John. If you mandate but, that every American purchase health insurance, you mandate that every business provide it, do we you create incentives that people, people end up in government-run insurance, and you provide public funding for abortion, you mandate insurance plans there, cover it within the exchange. There is no funding for abortion it's a in this bill. Healthcare. There is no funding for abortion in this bill. It, follow, it follows Hyde. That's not a, that's the John, case. You know that's not true. The Catholic Church, the Catholic bishops, 60, the right to 60, life says nuns public can't be funding wrong. for abortion. Thank God for the sisters of Notre Dame. That's what <laughs> let, I me, let me call it time here because we, we are out of time. But for more of this, our audience can tune into the House debate <laughs> uh, starting this afternoon. I, and I, I suspect that even pass or not pass, this debate continues. That's right. There uh, are strong, there are strong disagreements. But Mike Pence is an honorable man, and I look forward to this uh, debate. And our as are our colleagues. I hope that we do ratchet down the conversation, though, because when two of our colleagues are spat on and hurled uh, you know, racial slurs, it's that time to ratchet happen. down things. Well, I'll tell you, I was, I was in Selma with John Lewis. If what's reported to have happened was reported is contemptible, I denounce it in the strongest terms. Thank you. But I assure you, this debate will not end. Damn.
today. Or I probably on this show. I agree Thank with you that. very much. There's I appreciate it. There's going to be a lot of work to go. To. If health care reform wins passage in the House today, the measure heads back to the Senate.